set that on the back burner for a moment and let's look at Christian eschatology. So let's look at common accounts of the future in Christian tradition. I'm going to give you four varieties, four approaches to the future that you see a lot of in Christian circles. Okay? Four common approaches. The first approach draws out some conventional hope, something that we're all hoping for, or any, anyway, a group of people are hoping for, draws it out in terms of biblical history. So in the same way that sci-fi tends to take a, a, a current condition or a current longing and extrapolate it and set it in the future, and that's why sci-fi ages faster than every other genre practically, because it's really not about the future, it's about the present projected onto the future. Well, in the same way, some Christian eschatology takes a conventional cultural hope and projects it onto the future using biblical history. It reads our hopes into the Bible's future. Where do you see this? Most evangelicals in America in the 19th century were post-millennial. They believed that the world would get better and better as the gospel permeated the world more and more. According to Jesus' parable of, of the kingdom as yeast that, that, that works its way through the whole lump until the whole lump is leavened, that sounded like a world that was getting more and more Christian. Leading smoothly to, uh, to what in Revelation 20 is described as the coming to life of the saints who reign a thousand years with Christ in the millennium. All right? The world gets better and better as Christian faith grows and deepens. And sin is chased farther and farther to the margins. And then Jesus makes what you might call a soft landing after the millennium into a world that's prepared for it. Social reform movements among evangelicals in the 19th century were founded on this kind of post-millennial vision. Abolitionism, temperance, um, etc. Getting rid of vices that hurt our society is a way of acknowledging the power of the gospel and preparing for Christ's return after the millennium. Now you might ask, because we'll, we'll cover premillennialism in a bit, which understands Christ to come before the millennium begins. You might ask, wait, how can some people think that Christ comes after the millennium and other people think that Christ comes before the millennium? Well, it's because if you read Revelation, there's no one clear moment when Jesus returns in the way that it's described in, in the Gospels, for instance. And so, people trying to harmonize their texts sometimes think that the second coming happens after, and sometimes they think that the second coming happens before. It certainly happens, but when it happens isn't quite as clear in the book of Revelation as you might expect. So where there's ambiguity, it calls for judgment. And judgment's going to be seasoned by our own perspectives, by our cultural position, some people call Constantinianism a form of post-millennialism, right? Because at first, the Roman Empire is an opponent of the gospel, and then it's won over and turned into the Holy Roman Empire. Constantinianism understands the state really to be an ally or even an instrument of the church. I'd like you to see that it's a kind of vision of the future where, where the gospel turns human institutions to its purposes more and more and more. That is a Christian futurology. But it tends to take what we currently experience and project it and magnify it in the future. Where else do you see this kind of approach? I think progressivism ever since the Enlightenment has been a very influential eschatology. You don't think of it as an eschatology, you probably just think of it as true. That 
the future is going to be like the present, only better. The arc of history is long, but it bends towards justice. That is a progressive vision. That the world is getting better and better as time goes on, just because of the forces of time itself. We're getting more prosperous, we're getting freer, we're living longer and healthier. We're coming to know more and more. We're becoming able to do more and more. Right now, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow's election represents two versions of progressivism from which we choose one. Because progressivism is American ideology. On the right, that looks like the triumph of, oh, I don't know, global democratic capitalism. On the left, Maybe that looks more Marxian. It looks like a triumph of justice and equality. Um, those are both eschatologies. National hopes can be projected, or ethnic hopes can be projected onto the future. You might not have thought of Rastafarianism as, as a serious theological vision, but it's an Afrocentric, post-colonialist vision of people who were brought out of Africa going back and living in peace and justice and harmony under the reign of the Messiah, Haile Selassie, who rejected it because he was an Orthodox Christian. He said, no, I'm not the Messiah. Actually, he told that to Bob Marley personally, and Bob Marley personally, as a result, repented and left Rastafarianism and joined the Orthodox Church. A lot of people don't know that. Nevertheless, um, this is an ethnic vision of the future that projects its present hopes on that future. Lots of cultures do this, right? German National Socialism was a particularly dark form of national political aspirations projected onto the future, a thousand year Reich. Christian Reconstructionism is an effort penned by R.J. Rushduni to show how living according to biblical principles will make America and then the world better and better and more and more ready for Christ's return. Now I gave you a parable to show you that there's there are good reasons for post-millennialism. Jesus reigns at the Father's right hand and he's bringing all nations into subjection and his kingdom works like yeast in a lump of dough and so that looks post-millennial or at least you could draw it out to a post-millennial future. The danger though is that it can always, we, we can always um, import our own conventional understandings of what better means and assume that what Jesus brings is what we think Jesus ought to bring to the history of the world. And so our, our hope for an eternal future for creation can turn into our hope for conventional wisdom, for our own cultural assumptions to prevail. And that's how imperialism happened, right? The church is going to civilize the world. out of faithfulness to Jesus Christ.